Welcome to our W.E. Obishan At Home podcast series with John Haley. I'd like to welcome back to At Home, sponsored by Obishan Hardware, Keith Woodbury, our paint specialist from our Beverly location. Keith, welcome back to At Home. Good morning, John. Thanks for inviting me back. Well, it's a pleasure having you here, Keith. Obviously, your knowledge in the paint business is so valuable to our company and to our customers and to our listeners. We've had you here once before to talk about our premium interior paint lines. Today's discussion is going outside. We have different types of substrates outside, Keith. Vertical, horizontal, siding, shingles, decking. So we'd like to take a few moments today to talk with our customers and listeners regarding how to get ready for an exterior project. So Keith, when a customer comes into your store and asks you, or presents to you, we're ready to start painting the outside of our house, or we want to look at our deck. Where do you start off with some of your conversations with the customers about how to get ready mentally and prepared to take on an exterior project? Yeah, so when they first come in, first thing I need to know is, what is the project? What kind of prep are we going to put into this? Do you have any pictures, anything we can talk about? Um, the condition of whatever the substrate is, is key to what kind of prep I'm going to tell them, what kind of materials we're going to try to sell to them. We have two different types of surfaces. We have vertical and horizontal. Our discussion today will primarily be focused on our horizontal, our deck surfaces. But Benjamin Moore does manufacture several chemicals that can be used for both vertical surface cleaning and preparation, as well as deck surfaces for cleaning, stripping, and preparing as well for a restain. These chemicals are other options versus a power washer or aggressive sanding. So we want to talk about these chemicals in particular and how they can perform for the customer both in performance and in cost effectiveness. So let's begin with our deck surface. Now, if we had a deck surface, Keith, and somebody presented to you a photograph where we had broken stain or a broken paint finish, something that had a film coating on it, which product are you going to recommend that we start our maintenance and prep work with? Well, first, we're going to decide what kind of opacity they have on that deck. And then we're going to talk to them about the sanding or using the remove. We want to talk about getting that film off, getting a nice clean surface to work with. It's like uh, painting on a canvas. If you have a clean surface to work with, we're going to get the best longevity out of the product. The initial stage is removing that initial coating. So again, you just mentioned sanding could be an option. Power washing could be an option. The chemicals I found over the years used on a dry surface seem to be quite aggressive with removing mill coatings or film coating buildup versus getting directly into a sand or a power washer, which can be quite aggressive. Sanders can cut into the edge of a wood. Power washer could actually blow wood apart. So when we're working with chemicals in particular, Keith, we want to actually have an open conversation about, in this stage of the work, safety. So what would you discuss with your customers if we're working with Remove as far as safety is concerned? Yeah, so some of the things that we want to make sure that they have is some goggles, gloves, um, we want to make sure that they have the entire area around that washed down. Um, this stuff can burn, but we want to make sure that they take care of themselves. They don't get burned. They don't get anything in their eyes or their mouth. This is where all paint projects and all construction projects should really take place. Step one, safety. So Obershawn Hardware has all of those safety items readily available when you're ready to take on these outside projects. You're exactly correct, Keith. The caustic nature of the remove requires that we dampen the adjacent surfaces to prevent burn. If it's a vinyl-sided house, let's take the time to protect that surface. Now, we're getting ready to work with the remove. One of the suggestions from Benjamin Moore is to start off with a dry surface versus in our old school method, we might have misted a surface down in order to keep it wet and keep the chemicals activated. But with the Benjamin Moore Remove, that's not the case. We can put that on directly to a dry surface. Yeah, so we want to start with the dry surface. Uh, we want to make sure that we're reading the directions and we're diluting it to the need that we have. We want to then make sure that we spray the surface that we're going to be working with and not get ahead of ourselves. What tremendous advice, not getting ahead of ourselves. Working within a space that we can actually perform uniform work. We're not over pushing ourselves. We're not trying to extend the chemical product. Now, wonderful about these multiple chemicals available by Benjamin Moore is that they can be broken down up to 7 to 1. So your point about recognizing how strong you need that remover to be is goes through your testing. 
So you may need something that's a little bit stronger than a maximum seven to one dilution. It may be a three to one. It may be just a straight application of the remove. So when we're working with these caustic chemicals to remove that film coating, it'd be nice to do a little sample to see where we need to gauge ourselves so we have a better experience when we're going through this, well, it's an arduous task to strip. There's nothing fun about it, but it does get us back to a better substrate to get a better finish. Yeah, I always tell people, let's let the product do the work for you. Uh, every deck has a different paint on it. We don't know how many layers they have on it, so you might have to work a little bit harder. You definitely want to take your time, find out what's going to work for you, what ratio, and then once you get that, then you can start working on the full deck. What's also great about these chemicals, Keith, is without the power washer, our homes in America have 70 pounds of pressure at the spigot. 70 pounds of pressure is going to be sufficient amount of water pressure to wash off and rinse away the remove product or whatever chemical we're working with. So the power washer isn't truly required in order to remove the chemicals. I want to stop just for a moment there and talk about the use of a power washer and sanding versus the chemical. Let's pause for a moment and think about a seasoned or weathered deck. We might have some fissures or crack lines in here. So oftentimes we've had customers and listeners alike that have thought that power washing was the answer. Inside those fissures, there's what's referred to, and on the top of that surface of the deck, a gray cell. If the wood is silver or gray, we have what's called dead cell. It's like putting stain or paint on dirt if you don't remove that. So through a power washer, we may be able to be very efficient for removing that gray cell off the, the surface, but are we removing all the dead cell from inside the crevices or the cracks or fissures? Is a sander removing that dead cell from inside those cracks or fissures? More than likely not. So when we apply our new stains and we're ready to go forward, where's the first place we might experience some failure or some lift? Might be in some of those locations where the dead cell was. So I love your point about determining what kind of course of action we need to take. In my opinion, if we have older season decks, the chemicals give us better penetration into some challenged surfaces to help us remove all that embedded dead cell to promote better adhesion and better longer life. Keith, as a final notation regarding that remove product, rinsing is critical. So with that 70 pounds of pressure, we want to make sure we're thorough with trying to remove that embedded chemical throughout all the fibrous material on that deck surface. So let's just not just do a quick rinse. Let's thoroughly try and remove as much as we possibly can. One of the results of working with remove is when it's in a dry state, when the work is done, the wood seems a little bit darker, looks wet. And that's part of the reaction from the remove. Now, we've discussed stripping and removing stain and film coatings. Let's move on to our next product, which is Restore. In what situations, Keith, would you recommend suggesting Restore for a customer? Sure. When you have a deck that's been weathered, it's been aged, and you have that grain on there, you're going to want to get that off before you apply your stain. It's good to use the Restore. Uh, it will brighten up that wood. It will bring that wood back to life. I, I like to tell my customer it's sort of like exfoliating. You're going to take off that top layer. You're going to get back down to the the good hard wood, and you're going to prep that, getting ready for that stain. What a great term. I love that. If we're able to remove all that dead cell and we get down to a clean, stable surface, we have a much better opportunity for something to adhere to that. So the Restore is actually designed for this specific use, an unstained but aged surface. What are some of those outside influences where the Restore will really demonstrate how good it is? Pollen carbon, iron deposits from leaves, water damage, mold, mildew. This Restore product not only removes all of those items, but are also deeply embedded dead cell. Now what happens when we work with that remove, Keith, we want to go through the same process, dry surface and a thorough rinse. The best way to apply both of these caustic chemicals is with a bug sprayer. If we can put a bug sprayer on and possibly work on a 3x3 three three or a 4x4 four four space, then we keep a wet edge, keep the chemicals activated. With a thorough rinse, we can see tremendous progress through each step, and it's not quite as aggressive as the power tools or sanders or power washers. So with the Restore product, we want to make sure that once we have all the materials been removed, the gray cell is gone, what we will see sometimes when we've gone to that point is where the wood becomes textured. 
We say textured because we remove dead cell that sometimes lays in between the growth rings of the wood. So we'll find over time of repairing woods and cleaning, we'll find it will end up start getting a little bit of a texture or feel the grain of the wood. Now this is where we take a cross section of a deck that we've done some work on, even our temporary decks that we did for sampling, Keith. As I cut away on the side angles to manufacture the decks, I was able to really notice how minimalistic on the 5 eighths thickness of the deck the actual dead cell was. It was about a sixteenth of an inch at the top of the surface. This leads me to believe and know and let our audience know that there's a lot of life still left in a pressure-treated deck. So how do we get down to that surface? Well, we've done our remove. We've done our restore. We may want to consider a sand at that point to get to a smoother surface to get a uniform, non-textured walking surface. But there's still a lot of life in that deck. And this is why, for me, working with chemicals provides the homeowner and the listener longer life. Once we've gone through the restore process, we obviously want to make sure all these woods have dried. So we've cleaned or we've stripped or we've done our restore. We want to make sure our surface is dry before we get on to our next process. Now, with those chemicals being used, Keith, what would be your next step that you'd recommend to your audience and your store and the listeners about what our next step is to neutralize both of those chemicals? Well, we would suggest that they go with the brightener. Uh, the brightener is going to bring back the life of that color. It's going to also neutralize the pH level, bring it back down to a, a workable 7 or 8 so that the stain can be accepted into the wood and not pop. The brightener is really a fantastic. It's really the winning chemical of everything. Once you've gone through all the laborious work, once you apply that brightener, it does multiple things. It neutralizes all those chemicals in those deeply embedded crevices. So when we start applying our stains, we don't have a chemical reaction that might affect the bond. The neutralizing also, like you said, it happens right in front of your eyes, Keith, doesn't it? When you put that through a bug sprayer, you can watch the wood almost snap white or orange or that beautiful, rich, new look right as you're applying it. Does the brightener need to be rinsed off as well? You want to rinse it off, but you don't have to be aggressive with this. All you have to do is use your garden hose, rinse it off, and it's going to go through. But like you were saying, John, when you put that brightener on, it's a transformation of the wood. It's bringing it right back to life. It's a great look once that brightener has taken effect. And you know once that's dried, it's ready to go. You put your stain on, and you're going to see a brand new deck. It's going to be like buying something brand new all over again. It really is amazing, the reaction that chemical has. It's the citric acids that are in there that really just bring everything back to life. There is one little side um, bar regarding the Brighton, and what we refer to it in the paint industry is the corduroy effect. So when the brightener is put on and it dries, in all that fibrous surface, some of the very fine fibers raise, creating a peach fuzz. So some of our customers like to leave that in there for traction. They'll just put the stain right on that. We like to recommend knocking that down with a 180 or 150 grit sandpaper on a pole sander. So you can stand up comfortably going with the grain of the wood to knock down that raised grain to get a much smoother surface. But if that's the only side effect to a chemical that makes wood look brand new, I can live with that all day long. One of the things that we do over at our store in Beverly is up on my monitor screen, I have a picture of a deck that was power washed and then it dried and a deck that was power washed and it dried. And then we did a quick little, you know, just a once over sand. I refer to that fuzz like a spider web. And I explain to people when you put your stain onto that, the spider web is going to inhibit the stain from penetrating. If you can do a quick little exfoliate of that, you're going to get a lot better penetration on that, uh, a better adhesion, and probably a longer job. You know, what we're talking about here is all the important features to make sure we have adhesion, which is critical. The highest expectation from a house is the deck. We want to go out there and enjoy it. We don't want to be encumbered with work every time we want to light the grill or sit on the chair or watch the, the children play in the yard. So the decks are the least serviced part of any home at all. So we want a high return, but little effort. We're trying to educate the consumer a little bit differently. Putting in the effort gives you a better return. So in the initial stages of installing a deck, how many times, Keith, have we recommended for customers to hold off staining because the wood is too new? I tell them all the time, um, 
lot of times you're using a PT and you're going to have your lumber companies telling you, you know, a week or two and you can do it. I like to let it age a little bit. Uh, let it go through the process. It's a natural process. Um, let the mold and mildew and the grain start to come up. And then you're going to go in there and you're going to use your cleaner. You're going to clean that off. And every it, the natural process is going to take place. And then you're going to be ready for a beautiful stain. One of the most concerning uh, issues with decks or exterior painting at all is H2O. It's water. Water from the garden sprinkler. Water that's coming out of your downspouts. But water is the big concern. So this steps that we're talking to our customers and listeners about is really trying to make sure we get to the proper clean, dry, dull surface. But moisture, getting back to new PT, is the killer. So if we went to one of our box stores or something where lumber was stored outside, green decking, this material has a very high water content, well over 25%. The ideal water content for a decking surface would be ideally between 12 and 17%. Now there are lumber yards that keep that lumber in-house, out of the weather, which have a better condition. Will you pay more for a wood that's in a 12 or 17% moisture? Absolutely. But it's a ready-to-go product. These are critical issues right here for the consumer to consider when they're, they're purchasing their decking and when they intend to try and get it finished. So ideally, in New England, Keith, do we ever get 12 or 17% ideal conditions? And if we do, how many days does that last for consecutively? It's very tough. Um we try to let our customers know that you're going to have to watch the weather patterns. You want it to dry out, I like to say, three days with some good sun to really get that water content down to, like you said, the 12 to 17%. If you can get that, you're probably going to get the best job on your avocado stain. And one of the things that we just want to just mention, wood directly out of the box store or from our lumber yards going onto the deck and if we've gone through that seasoning, allowing it to go for three months, four months to allow some of the water repellent to release itself from the fibers of the wood so it would actually be ready to receive a colorant or a stain or a sealer, that Brighton is really a wonderful product to use directly. You mentioned the cleaner because obviously the lumber is handled. It's shipped. There's ink marks from manufacturing. There's transportation handling marks. But the brightener in particular can initiate the opening of that grain. So oftentimes we can recommend if you season the deck, work with the brightener. Get that grain to open up. So this is your initial application. Let's make sure the initial application bonds. All paint failures on the outside of a house originally go back to the original coat. Yeah, so we tell our customers all the time that the prep is 90% of the job. If you're willing to put in the effort, you can extend the life of that abacote line. There's no question about that. And let's think about that just in general. Siding on the house has the butt and the face exposed. But a piece of decking has six sides exposed to the elements. Top, bottom, two sides, and two butts. And depending on where that deck is located, if it's in the grade or above grade or on a first floor or second floor, will really determine whether we can seal all six sides of the deck surface. We strongly recommend that for better protection and longer life. But in many situations, we find ourselves where we can only put the stain coating on the top surface. This is where it's critical to make sure that surface is prepared as best as possible to make sure we can get as long a life through that adhesion to that one side as possible. So we want to strongly suggest to all of our listeners to stain as much as you possibly can. This will protect your investment, your time and effort from the natural elements. Moisture wants to find its way into wood fiber. It doesn't matter what door it gets in. It only has one direction to go. It's through your surface and to the sun. So let's keep that in mind. We're making sure we're putting on. If we're only able to treat one side of that deck, let's give it a fighting chance. Let's get that fiber down, make sure it's dry to the right moisture content or as close as we possibly can. We have to be realistic. We're in New England. Keith, let's take a moment to review the prep procedures that we've just discussed. We've gone through the whole process of removing the film coatings that are on the surfaces of the deck. And now we've allowed it to dry and we've done a thorough rinse. We know that surface needs to be neutralized. The same process happens with Restore. So once we go through that process, we want it to be thoroughly removed through a thorough rinse and then allow it to dry before we go on to our next phase. Now, one of the chemicals that we haven't talked about here is simply the cleaner. So the cleaner doesn't require these multiple steps. The cleaner is universal. 
This could be used for siding, for decks to remove dirt buildup, some of the pollen and carbon, some surface debris. Perfect for lawn furniture, grills, patios, concrete. Do you sell a lot of the cleaner products to your customers, Keith? We do pretty good with the cleaner. Myself and the staff uh, were well-educated through the help of Benjamin Moore and Obishan, and we explained to them using the cleaner on a regular basis is going to elongate whatever surface you're, uh, whether it's your siding, your shingles, your deck, your lawn furniture. You don't want, your, like you said, your pollen, your mold, your mildew to sit on there because it's going to decay it. This is a great point you just mentioned. We stopped, we were talking about decks and horizontal surfaces, and now we're talking about a vertical surface. For many reasons, I'd be a little leery about wanting to use remove on a vertical surface because of all the safety issues of splatter of run. If the material would actually be able to hold on and be able to perform on a vertical versus sliding down the vertical surface. So for that kind of discussion, we are talking about power washers and sanders and grinders, perhaps, to remove film coatings to get to a stable substrate. And the same principle would apply to the restore. Now, the restore on a vertical would be strictly be used for a house that was stained and never painted. So that could be a very small window of opportunity. But the cleaner, everybody's home can be cleaned. We don't realize, just as homeowners, that that little blackening that takes place underneath the butts of our shingles or our clapboards, that's carbon from the exhaust of vehicles. It's very easy to remove, but this will, in the long run, degrade the paint or stain coating. The pollen. Can we control pollen? We're in New England. The pine trees, it goes everywhere. And this pollen is the beginning stages of a mold buildup or lichen or some other foreign growth on our surfaces that we do not want to have. And the cleaner works for all of these type of challenging situations. Now, how would you recommend for somebody to work on the side of their house if they were going to use that to clean, let's say, their vinyl siding? Or they just painted the house a year ago and they just wanted to freshen it up. What kind of direction would you give your customers about how to approach that? Well, usually we tell them, you're going to go with the cleaner. Uh, We'll sell them a five-gallon bucket. They're going to do their mixture into that. If they have a power washer, I usually tell them to use that. Hopefully they have an injector and they can put the injector right into the cleaner and they can just spray that onto the house. If they have a ladder and they need to get up there and maybe do a little scrubbing on some of those more difficult areas, that obviously would help too. But with the power washer, you should be able to drop all that dirt, all that pollen, that carbon right off that house. You made a wonderful point, Keith, about the hand manipulation of a surface. Now, we know the 3,000 or 2,500 PSI in a power washer is aggressive. It's going to make things happen. But nothing beats putting your hand on a surface. If you had a brush to agitate a surface to get something that might be embedded, if you had to rely on 3,000 pounds of pressure to remove an embedded pollen or dirt or carbon, you might do more damage to the film coating than you expected. So I think this is wonderful advice. So as a follow-up to that cleaning product, this cleaning product can be used on a multitude of surfaces, not just siding or decks. We can talk about vinyls, patio furniture. So it has multiple uses for the homeowner. And this product, as the rest of them, can be broken down seven to one. So for home maintenance, this product in particular could have a long life, an entire season's life. And let's think about that overall. Our customers, you have an expense to a project and an investment to a project. But as you're doing, well, unfortunately, this whole topic has to do with the two naughty words of prep and maintenance. But all of us in New England who have outside areas that we want to live off of and enjoy like a deck or a patio, it's going to take some effort to maintain this. So this is something that we need to have in our discussion and customers and our listeners have to realize that that outside is a challenge to have anything, film coatings really adhere. So the more effort we put up front to prepare a surface, the longer life we can expect from our investment with either stain or the wood itself. Okay, Keith, so now we've had an opportunity to discuss with our audience and as you do on a daily basis with your customer, some of the very important chemicals that Benjamin Moore has manufactured to prepare us outside for success, whether we're painting or staining the outside of our house or our decks. We took a moment to discuss our Remove product. The Remove, a caustic material designed to remove film coatings, paint and stain. Easy to neutralize, water cleanup, readily available at every one of your Obershawn hardware stores. The Restore product, very unique. 
Restore a, a deck that's been aged with a gray cell. Possibly some dirt and carbon embedded in the surface. Easy application of the bug sprayer, a rinse down. And we're preparing ourselves with both of those applications, which will require the Brighton. So Keith, just take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, please, and review the brightener and the cleaning products for our listeners. Sure. We're going to use the brightener, as we said before, to neutralize that pH level from the restore and the remove. And that's just a very gentle wash-in after that. It's a thorough wash-in, but not, not too much power. Uh, we're also going to use that for mill glaze on some of your PT that's come out after it's been weathered a little bit. The brightener is going to bring back the life of that wood. It's going to show you that yellow beautiful look that you're looking for. And then with the cleaner, we're going to bring that cleaner on. We're going to use that on many substrates at your house. We're going to use it on your shingles, your concrete, your stucco, and of course your deck and porches. That should be an annual use. This is only going to elongate the life of your projects. Well, Keith, I think we've given our listeners a well-rounded advice about the four major chemicals that are manufactured by Benjamin Moore to assist in the preparation of our exterior surfaces for either staining or painting. Keith, I want to take another moment to thank you for joining us today at home, sponsored by Obishan Hardware. Thank you very much, John. It was my pleasure to be here with you. Keith, this is part one of a two-part series. We're going to be able to discuss then our Arbor Coat coatings. Excellent. Thank you. For more information, please visit hardwarestore.com. Thanks for listening to At Home with John Haley.